Hey everyone, the question today is what is happening in downtown Portland's condo market? I'm Alex Roy, trusted realtor with John L. Scott in Portland, Oregon. It's November 2nd, 2022 and we have all become well aware of the news that the real estate market here and across the nation has been transitioning from that strong seller's market into more of a neutral and in some cases a buyer's market. It's a transitioning market. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to take a look at what is happening specifically in downtown Portland's condo market. In this video, we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into some of the numbers, got some analysis for you so we can figure out where have we been, where are we right now and then where are we going to and hopefully with that information that's going to help you as either the seller of a condo or a buyer of a condo if you're interested in buying make a good decision at this point in time all right so the first chart i want to show you is one that is looking at all of the condos in downtown portland including the pearl district slab town the riverfront uh like uh, the mccormick pier condos and all around uh, Northwest 23rd Ave, all the condos out that way, I'm including those all. And I've got two lines on this chart, new listings, how many uh, condos in that quarter came on the market that were new listings, and then the orange one are how many condos sold, closed transaction during that quarter as well. As you can see, this has definitely been the nature of condo sales in the downtown Portland. There's always been more listings coming on than condos that actually sell. There's never been a 100% rate of absorption where buyers are buying up every single condo available. Some of them uh, sit around for a long time. They're eventually withdrawn. They end up getting rented out. The person decides not to move. That's what happens to that excess inventory. Or it gets pulled off the market, gets listed again, gets count twice as listing and eventually gets sold. That's a little bit of anomaly with the stats, but we always see more listings than the number sold. So what has happened since 2016 in the third quarter to present day uh, Q3 where I've got data for this year? Well, first I wanna start by just pointing out the seasonality of listings. We all know that a prime time for people to list homes and condos is in the spring and in the uh, late summer into fall. And we see that totally playing out here every fourth quarter, getting into the November, December, right at this time period, boom, the number of uh, condos being listed drops way off. But the buyer, and sometimes, you know, the number of closed transaction tracks with that, but I find that, and, and as you'll see here with the numbers, the activity of the buyers doesn't play out exactly like that. There can be a lot more buyers at that spring and summertime that are uh, picking up all that inventory that is coming on. But as you see from the numbers, buyers are more following how the interest rate rolls and just uh, responding to what is available on the market. The time where we really see a change from the seasonality is right here in Q2 of 2020. What happened then? That is right when the pandemic started. COVID, uh, we all became aware of it. There were suddenly uh, restrictions and everyone was quarantined. It put the brakes on real estate listings and real estate activity, but very quickly we got guidelines on how we could proceed with our real estate business, how we can list homes. And we saw that pick up again as, uh, by uh, the third quarter when we were able to list again and get the uh, real estate market back up and rolling. And the buyers came back again because that's when rates really started to drop. By uh, Q1 of 2021, rates had significantly dropped. Everyone was very aware that they could get something in the low threes for an interest rate, realized it was a great time to buy because it was like banks were giving away practically free money. And we saw that buying rate really pick up. Seasonality, came back, we had our normal seasonality all through the pandemic where it went up and down. And you can see that compared to other times, the buying rate was super high all during that period where people had interest rates in the low threes. But this year, 2022 has been the year of transition where at the start of the year, when we were still in the threes for interest rates, we have now seen the interest rate tick up first at four and a half percent, five, then up into six, nearing on seven a couple months ago, and now back into the sixes again. And all through that, we've seen that steep drop in buyer activity. The seasonality of the listings continues, 
as a sellers with various motivations are going to continue to try to sell their property, but we're definitely seeing that drop in buyer activity. On to the next slide. In this one, we are looking at the average sales price for any price class of condo. So whether it's a $250,000 priced condo or a $1.2 million priced condo, they are all included in this graph and we're looking at the average sales price of all of them. Just our best general marker for what is happening with condo prices. Once again, we see some fluctuation in those prices and one thing we have to be careful of when we're looking at average sales prices of condos in downtown Portland is that we have to remember we're dealing with a really small data pool. And so uh, in one quarter, we have a couple more sales of very high priced uh, condos versus uh, and a small reduction in lesser priced condos. That's really going to throw uh, and skew our numbers and spike them up. Conversely, a few less expensive uh, condos are sold and more lower priced condos are sold, we're gonna see a drop. But what is important to look at is the trend. And what we definitely see trending was a period where it was jumping around and felt fairly stable. But as soon as, by the time we get to the point where the pandemic is starting, we're starting to see a downward trend despite the really great interest rates and uh, though uh, prices were jumping around we're starting to see them not peak up as high as they used to and now seeing a real trend in the last couple quarters of them dropping as sellers get nervous invent more inventory sitting on the market and it shifts more to a buyer's market so in our next chart, this is hopefully going to make more sense of how that average sales price number moves around. We are looking at the total number of condos sold per price class. And so I've got it broken out into three price classes. I've got the under 300,000 in light blue, all the affordable condos. In the dark blue, we've got all the condos priced from three to 700,000. We'll consider that our mid range. And then the orange, are all of our luxury condos over $700,000 in sales price. And this is the total number of units that were sold. As you can see, there's always fewer luxury condos sold. There's just simply fewer of them out there. The middle range are in the mid and there's lots of condos around there and a lot more of them being bought and sold that are in the under 300 uh, price class. At any time in the market, that's always happening. And it's really interesting to see how these coincide with our last chart to jump it back. Here's our average sales price. And we saw this one anomaly right here in 2018, Q3, Q4, it really spikes. Why might that be? We look at that time period and that is right when we had the largest uh, amount of the over 700 condos being sold with that many more being sold and it being a relatively low time of the 300k being sold but the mids and the highs are up that is skewing our average price way up so that's that's when you're dealing with a much smaller uh, data pool like just the downtown Portland as opposed to looking at all condos across Washington and Oregon. You're going to get a much more proper average number there. Here you can have some real variation from time to time depending on what's happening at that individual uh, data pool time. But to continue on with what else we can glean from this graph, we're looking at the total number sold and we see that as we were moving into really strong interest rate time in 2021 where we had that low interest rate, there were simply more and more condos being sold. But as we get to 2022 where the interest rate has risen, those numbers, particularly the mid range, wow, have dropped off very sharply. Buyers have put the brakes on purchasing because of the increase in the interest rate. So let's take a look at what is happening right now in downtown Portland's condo market. Here I've got a little snapshot of all the current listings in the downtown area as of yesterday, November 1st, and these are all the condos that have been on the market for more than seven days. So I didn't include any of the ones that were just listed in the last week. I wanna look at all the ones that have been on the market for more than seven days, because what I wanna show is of those 265 that are currently for actively for sale in the downtown area for more than seven days, 
68 of them have dropped their price in the last 30 days, have done a price reduction. And that actually is only a quarter of the inventory that is out there. So whether they've been on the market for 200 days so far, or they've only been on the market for a month, only a quarter of them have dropped their price at some point in the last 30 days when we have seen stagnation in the market. What that says to me, the takeaway is, this is not a super high number. What I am not seeing right now uh, over the past month, the month of October, are a whole bunch of sellers panicking, dropping their price, and seeing a whole on fire sale of condos in the downtown. So if you're a buyer that has been looking for that indication, I would that you know sellers are really, really moted uniformly across the board to sell and they're all willing to drop their price, that is not happening. And that may not ever really happen because the seller market, the pool of sellers, is not a single-minded market. Every seller has a little bit different motivation, a little different place they're coming from. Some are living in their condo and totally fine to be there for another two years. They do not have to move if they don't want to. They're willing to sit on a particular price that they want or need to get, and they're not going to be dropping their price as much. Uh, others have it vacant. Their renters or their tenants that were in there have vacated the condo and now they're just paying that HOA dues and property tax every month and not using it. They're very motivated. They're the ones dropping their price. And so when you are trying to decide when is the right time to buy as a buyer for a condo and your only motivation is to get a really great deal on the condo, at this present time, you need to be searching for condos that they themselves have actively dropped their price and you can tell that you have a motivated seller. That's where you're going to find that deal. But if you're just looking at any condo across the market, you're not necessarily getting that, I, that deal with any condo that's currently out there. That's my takeaway for it. Let's check in again in uh, Q1 of 2023, see if this number has increased. My prediction is that this number will bump up, but it won't be crazy high. I think we will see more that have done price reductions, but not much higher than that. My prediction for the future. So now we come to the average sold price by size. We divided up the total number sold by a price class, but you know, as prices change, that might not give us the full story of what's happening with pricing of condos. And so maybe to be more accurate as we're looking back into the past, let's divide up the three by their size. And here we're not looking at the total sold, we're looking at the average sold price. Final slide I've got on that. For all the condos that are over 2,000 square feet, they're obviously priced more. And you can see they're up, always averaging around this $750,000 range. The green are all the condos that are 800 to 1200 square feet, plenty of two bed, one bath condos in that range, two bed, uh, two bath in that range. And with those ones, they're, they've been lingering kind of, you know, up in the uh, lower fours, almost getting up to the uh, fives, uh, uh, in the high fours, always almost up to the fives. And then for those that are under 800 square feet, plenty of one bed, one bath, and studio condos in that, they've been floating around above 250 with uh, a small price drop right when the pandemic started. And you did see a number of them start to sell off very quickly when people weren't working in downtown Portland anymore. But the main thing I wanna show is that we've had with the larger condos, a steady, slow drop in the average price all through 2019. There's been some spikes up, but the trend has been down. There was a little bit solidifying of the trend upwards or leveling off upwards when the interest rate was really great through 2001. But then after a final surge, it has dropped off significantly to its lowest average price in the last six years for the over 1200 square foot class. So there is actually an indication that if you're looking at condos over 1200 square feet, it is on average, they are the lowest price they have been at any point in the last six years. It's also somewhat true for the middle range ones, though they saw some low numbers all the way back in 2019, 2020, and they're right around that point. 
And then same with the least expensive condos, much more expensive in 2016, 2017 on average. They've seen a bit of a steady decline. They had a surge when the interest rate was coming back up, but they have now started to drop again. But where we're seeing the largest average price drop is certainly in the over 1,200 square foot condos in the downtown Portland area. So why are interest rates such a huge driving factor in the sales price of uh, condos and the number that are sold? If you're a buyer, you're already well aware of this because you're, you're deep into the numbers, you're doing the calculations, you're trying to make a purchase. But as a seller, I want you to be aware of this so that you understand the mindset of the condo buyer out there. And these are, this is the reality that a lot of buyers are looking at. Here I've got a mortgage calculator from bankrate.com. And what I want to show you is if I'm trying to keep my monthly payment, my PITI, principal, interest, tax, and insurance, and also going to include HOA dues in that case, and um, if you're below 20%, uh, your mortgage insurance premium, uh, if I want to keep that to $3,000 a month, right around there, and I have $40,000 to put down as down payment, when I could get an interest rate of 3.5%, I could buy a home purchase of $520,000 priced home or condo. However, if I keep all these numbers the same in terms of the down payment, the cost of the insurance, all those things, and, and the property tax, if all of those are the same, but the only thing changes is the interest rate, and that has increased to 6%, if I want to keep the same $3,000 a month monthly payment, I can now only afford a $400,000 home. So that is a significant shift from 3.5 to 6%. You are dropping from $520,000 purchase that you can afford to a $400,000 purchase that you can afford. That means for all those sellers that had condos that were priced at $520,000, for those buyers out there that needed to keep their payments around $3,000 a month, you've just lost all of those buyers. They are now shopping down around the $400,000 range if they are shopping at all at this time. So it's been a significant reduction in the buyer pool at those higher price points, which totally explains why we're seeing that drop off at those higher price points. That, that can be a big indicating factor of that. And so, Let's talk about some tips and some strategies for uh, buyers out there. First one, condo buyers. I want you guys, when you are shopping for a condo, and when we're working together, I want you to be savvy buyers. Uh, you're searching online, you're looking at Zillow listings, you're looking at Redfin listings. Look, I want you to know that the best listing source of information is directly from a realtor with an RMLS listing uh, page, which I'm gonna show you. And the only way you're gonna get that is by getting your realtor, hopefully it's myself, but if you're working with another realtor out there, I'll give you the same advice, get them to set you up with an RMLS listing automatic search. And so let's take a look at what you can see in that. Here's a typical page of one. I just randomly selected a condo that is actively for sale, and this is the top third of a listing page that you would see if you're getting an RMLS listing. And here's a few things I wanna show. Obviously, you're gonna see the uh, initial details of the current list price, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, total square footage in the property, and when was it originally listed. And that brings me to the first one I really want you aware of, DOM, days on market, how long has this listing been on market? And so, 12 days, this one's been on for less than two weeks. It's practically a super fresh listing in this market on at no time at all, if that, but you'll definitely find some that have been out on the market for 280 days. Been around a long time, been trying to sell it for a while. Should note that there are some ways that realtors can play around with listings, taking them off, relisting the same property under a different MLS number that can reset that days on market. But if you really want to know, you know, is this truly a new listing or was this listed before? Do I remember seeing this one somewhere in my feed before? Just check with your realtor and I can, give me a call and I can tell you if in the history that property had been listed before under a different MLS number. 
You'll also see things like when was the building built, lots of details about uh, you know the neighborhood name. This is some boring stuff that you're not going to notice a whole lot. You've got your listing description, but where some real interesting details come in that you need to consider when you're purchasing because they really affect your bottom line are down in the financial section where we see the property taxes per year. This one being 5,300. That, you know, for condo buildings that are a little bit newer and depending on the size, that might be a very reasonable property tax per year. For other condos and uh, my feeling on this one, if I just had to say from my gut without looking in too much detail, for an 837 uh, square foot condo, one bed, one bath, that's a little bit on the high side, but uh, that will be pretty consistent with all the units in that building throughout that building. So if you like that building, that's the property tax that you are going to be uh, stuck with. But if you have the flexibility to look at other buildings, you might be able to find a lower property tax on uh, another similar size condo in a different building. And the other one you need to pay attention to because it really affects that monthly payment you're making every month are the monthly HOA dues, these being $429 uh, per month. I think that's pretty average for a condo of the size, certainly one that has property taxes of that amount. I think it is concerning uh, and obviously it really you know hurts your monthly payments if that uh, monthly HOA due was something really high like $650 uh, per month for just a little one bed, one bath condo, that would be pretty high and that may simply be because the HOA needed to restock their reserves or they have some large special assessment projects that they're trying to uh, pay for and so they need to up the dues for a period of time, possibly for many years into the future. But likewise, I would also be suspicious of condos that have uh, surprisingly low HOA dues. If this one's HOA dues were only $230 per month, I would be a little bit suspicious of that HOA if they're properly collecting enough money from all of the residents to keep their reserves up for upcoming projects. So dues, got to have them when you have an HOA, when you have a condo, something has to pay for that building's maintenance and take care of all the facilities there. You don't want them too high, but you also have to be a little bit suspicious when they're really low, usually looking for a reasonable middle spot. Pay attention to that as you're searching around for condos. And last, uh, two last things I want to point out. One is down here. Some condos have a parking space, some do not. And for those that do have a parking space, that do have a garage, Sometimes the parking spot is deeded. Sometimes it's just a common area that is assigned to the unit. If it's common area that's assigned to the unit, there's no additional property taxes. But if that parking space is deeded, you actually have a whole separate little tax ID that you own. It's like you own that little tiny space and you are paying annual property taxes on it. The whole condo, you're paying $5,300 a year for property taxes on that unit. For your parking space, $284 per year on that parking space for this one particular condo. That is an adorable, uh, small amount of taxes that you're paying a year on that, but adds to your bill nonetheless. So that's a little something to, to notice there in the uh, lower part of the listing in the condo supplement. And lastly, we can see at the very bottom, the original price that uh, the condo was originally listed at. And so if you're looking up at the top and you see that it is listed right now for uh, five, or $359.9 and I'm looking down at that original price, clearly they have had a $10,000 price drop since they've gone on the market. They've only been on the market for 12 days. That to me does, uh, you know, might be an indication that we have a motivated seller in this case. So that's, those are the kind of details I want you to pay attention to as you're searching for condos using this Armalest listing load or uh, listing page. Other tips for home buyers, remember to stay on top of those new listings. Uh, if you're gonna catch those deals, if a really good one comes up, you wanna see it right away so you can get in there, take a look at it and get an offer in before anyone else sees that deal. Best way to do that, have me set up an MLS listing search for you. And then rate buy down strategies. 
That's the other thing I wanted to mention to you because it is something that a lot of lenders have been talking about and are offering uh, some really interesting programs with at this time. What rate buy down means is that you can pay to the lender out of pocket before you close in the transaction, you're gonna give them money to buy down the interest rate, either buying down the interest rate a little bit over the life of the entire loan, or you can do what's uh, called a 321 program. Some call it a 321 program or a step program. There's a couple different names for it, but where you can buy down the interest rate significantly in the first year, moderately in the second year, and then by the third year, it's going back to the normal interest rate that you had locked in at the start, but with an opportunity to refinance at a lower rate at that time if interest rates have dropped by, you know, three or four years into the future. So that's a very interesting program that I encourage anybody who's out there uh, shopping right now to discuss with their lender. It's something I advise all my buyer clients about, and it can really help up the purchase price that you can afford, uh, certainly in those first couple of years of making those payments. Remember that uh, the first couple of years of, you know, the, all those first years of your 30 year mortgage are primarily interest rate heavy. And so buying down that interest rate can really reduce those monthly payments on those first couple of years, allowing you uh, when you're on a budget to be able to purchase more condo. So talk to your lenders about that rate buy down strategy a rate buy down, I think it's a great option. And when if you're trying to figure out how can I get that extra cash out of pocket to pay for this rate buy down, that may be something that we can even negotiate for the seller to pay for as part of the transaction. If you want more explanation on this, either talk to your favorite lender or give me a call. I can walk you through a bit of it and I can also refer you to some really great lenders that can explain it and get you pre-approved. So that is what is happening right now in Portland's condo market. Let me remind you that if you want to at any time, go check out Portland's that are for sale on the market right now. Give me a call. I love going on condo tours in the downtown. I can also set you up with an automatic search and I can get you lender recommendations that you need. All my contact information is of course in the uh, description below and I've got links to some great information uh, about what you saw here today, including this slide package. I'm Alex Roy, trusted realtor in Portland, Oregon with John L. Scott Real Estate, working hard for your success.